Well, the whole chain is what matters. Throwing out the line again can easily take 20 minutes. Wrong information will cost money. If you don't use the correct material, that somebody gets injured. We can easily speed up the process by half an hour. Time is money. A, a good mooring plan is vital. When you hear all that, you realize that things don't always go smoothly. And that's not really surprising when you consider behind the simple sentence a vessel brings a cargo to a port lies a whole world, a complex chain with very many links. In the past, people in the port used to have a nautical background. If they didn't have this nautical background, they got it anyway, as there was sufficient time to swap experiences during visits on board. Now the number of people in the port with a nautical background is getting smaller and smaller. On top of that, they've not time anymore to swap experiences, as the vessels spend less and less time in port. Especially nowadays, the mutual understanding between the people in the port and on board the vessels is getting increasingly important, as vessels are getting larger and the need for shorter stay in port is getting bigger. The system usually works well. The question is, can it be improved? Because it's usually the little things that go wrong. Each time a small detail, but add them all up. An example. This vessel has to wait for the pilot for an hour because the voyage planning was based on outdated information on the tidal windows of the port. When the port plan was adjusted for pilot, tugs, terminals, boatmen, etc., to the updated ETA, it turned out that the vessel had to berth on the port side instead of the starboard side, to a different manifold. All the deck preparations had to be redone. Another half hour. All added up, an hour and a half cost thousands of dollars, and then we still haven't considered all the vexation, extra fuel, extra emissions, etc. There is a great deal to win on all these fronts. How? Well, by having a good look at all the links in the chain and how the connections can be strengthened. The chain of all the partners who are involved in the vessel's cargo and voyage, in bringing it into port, docking and loading and unloading in the ports. The aim of this film. Awareness, better understanding and best practices. The whole chain revolves around the vessel and the cargo to be transported. The traders and shipping planners work on the basis of information from ports and terminals. It all starts with data provided by the harbour master. For example, data on the port entrance, the exact depth, currents, terminal capacity. The information is provided to various parties who request it. Publishers of nautical charts and books, shipping agents, etc. For example, the United Kingdom Hydrographic Office. It supplies this information in charts and books. This information about ports and terminals is crucial to visiting ships. Ideally, for each port, this data should be obtained from a single source, such as the Port Information Guide. The reliance we place on other parties is, is considerable, but in a way it's in their own advantage that they give us accurate information because the confidence of the mariner going into a port is built hugely on all the little things that he needs to know before he goes in. And if those early things look good, then he's going to have confidence in his berthing operations. And for vessels which are unfamiliar, on unfamiliar territory, then it's really quite important that those things are right.
Traders and shipping planners use all this information to decide how much cargo can go to which port and terminal, with which vessel. When in doubt about the exact depth of the port, they work with a safety margin in order to ensure sufficient underkill clearance. Coming in with a draft of 50 meters, eh, as advised by maybe authorities that it is possible. But in the end, it comes out that uh, only the maximum draft will be 14.9. Uh, um, it can cause uh, a loss in, in cargo to be loaded or to be discharged. And in the end, there will be more costs or more income for the uh, for the charters or for the uh, the time charters so it's very important for us to provide this these parties all the parties concerned with the exact information an average tanker such as an aframax if the trader employs an extra safety margin of 15 centimeters on top of the normal underkeel clearance that means thirty seven thousand eight hundred dollars less cargo And then we're still only talking about one vessel. Just think how much cargo a port can miss out on in this way. With, for example, 1,000 vessels, that's 1,000 times 1,350 tonnes, or 1 1.3 million tonnes. That's why up-to-date port and terminal data is so important. Therefore, the IHMA site is a great initiative with complete up-to-date information in a standardized format. The link between shipper, vessel and port is often the agent. He is familiar with the local situation and coordinates the contacts between vessel or ship owner and pilots, tugs, the terminal, customs, etc. This is work for which accurate and reliable information is a must both from the vessel and from the port and terminal. It is strange that we have to scrap our data from uh, certain parties and that within these parties uh, the data which we are receiving differs from person to person. Well, to all the ports and terminals, uh, I would ask for your help in completing the database and completing the information and getting it into this single window. I think that is the way to go. Standardization and everything, I think, is the way to go. For the master, exact planning to the pilot station is important for calculating the most efficient speed. For this planning, he needs the exact tidal windows and terminal planning information. This forms the basis for voyages that are both safe and efficient and affects fuel consumption and emissions. A small difference in speed means a big difference in bunker consumption. Two vessels are going from Gibraltar to Rotterdam. One travels at 15 knots, the other one, with the right information, 12 knots. The difference? 80 tons, or approximately $35,000. That's 250 tons less CO2. A considerable sum, and then we're still not taking into account the costs of waiting if the vessel arrives outside the tidal window because the data wasn't completely correct. So for this vessel, a delay of six hours costs a total of approximately $10,000. The ETA that the master transmits to the port is very important because an up-to-date ETA of the vessel goes via the harbour master to the pilot, the tugs, boatman and terminal. The ETA is therefore the basis for planning these links in the chain. The terminal operator sends the mooring plan and the manifold information to the vessel important information for having the lines in the right place on arrival and preparing the manifold. This can easily make a difference of half an hour when docking. To ensure quick and safe movement in the port, it is essential that the VTS is aware of all the vessels and their planned actions. For every vessel this means 
we port fully and listen properly, because each vessel forms part of a single large logistical operation in a port. Thanks for the Mistral. Are you on the line? When the vessel is being brought in, everything revolves around the pilot. He knows the local conditions, and he coordinates the tugs and boatmen for the master. Uh, you are waiting at the low light for me? Being able to get on board safely is of course a first requirement. With a good ladder, safely secured. The pilot informs the master of his intended maneuver. It is very important that the master and the pilot both have the same information on the port and the terminal, right up to the mooring plan at the terminal, so that everything can be made ready on deck. Alas, daily practice often shows a lack of this information exchange. Of course, English is the language of communication on the bridge. The uh, crew four and a half, quarter past two, please. Much relies on good communication between all those parties involved in the complex operations in a port. For example, it's useful for a master to know the rendezvous point with the tugs. That way, he can ensure that his crew is standing by on deck in good time. Be aware that a last-minute change to an action costs a great deal of time. On a 350-meter vessel, it takes 10 minutes to walk from bow to stern. At a harbor speed of 6 knots, by then the vessel is a mile further. Therefore, the rendezvous point of tugs for the master is very important to have the crew stand by. The correct place to throw the forward heaving line is from the back of the forward mooring deck. Good preparation saves a lot of time when mooring. It starts with the correct information from the terminal. Which manifold? What will be the position of the wing of the bridge? A clear mooring plan also saves time. Then it is immediately apparent from which deck the spring lines must be paid out. Having the boatman take the lines ashore by boat saves a great deal of time. While this is being done, a member of the vessel's crew looks over the rail to check that there is not too much nor too little slack. Okay, slack. With some companies we put a bowman on the vessel. The, the time saved is worth more than the cost, especially on the large vessels with a small deck crew. The increasing size of vessels creates ever heavier demands on safety. For example, the use of quick release hooks. Equipment that measures distance and approach speed gives everyone the same information and can prevent damage to a fender, which can easily cost 10,000 euros. Docking at the terminal goes quickest when everything is well prepared on board, on the basis of the data that the vessel has received earlier from the terminal. Planning of jetties and pipelines is crucial at the terminal. Uh, for that, it's important that FOPAC timely gets the right information and that all parties, like tugboats, linemen, surveyors, captains, uh, all work closely together. The vessel is safely moored alongside and the gangway is in positioning. Time saved, less irritation, cost savings, more cargo per vessel, better utilisation of the port and terminal capacity. That is all possible by improving cooperation between all the partners in this chain. It's possible and it must happen because vessels are getting bigger and the spot market for bulk cargoes means that increasingly vessels put in ad hoc at a port and want to be served more quickly. And all that with a smaller crew probably with less experience. Quite a challenge. The key lies in strengthening the complete chain. And that starts with understanding each other, understanding what the other is doing, and considering how to make a particular link stronger. It's very important that, that we realize that we have to work as a team. Everyone is heavily occupied with his own link. It would be good to look at the neighboring links. In fact, it is amazing that we as professionals 
have to improvise so much. It is probably one of the first times that we've addressed it jointly and it's an ideal opportunity to identify the problem, to strengthen our bonds between the members of the chain and to improve the service we offer. We as Harbour Masters, we also have a challenge. We will strive to strengthen the nautical chain by providing better information for all the partners in the chain. But it is now time to look together to, on, on how to improve the nautical chain as a whole. And that will lead to safer, cleaner, smoother shipping operations in the port area. And that will lead to more pleasure for the vessels entering our port. It's all about the quality of the chain. Goodbye.